And for more reaction to the passing of Brian Mulroney, I'm joined by federal conservative leader Pierre Polyev. Thank you so much for coming in studio. I appreciate it. And you know, we just heard from the prime minister, and I know maybe on any given day, you, the two of you might not agree on everything, but I'm sure you agree with him when he says that Mr. Mulroney was an extraordinary statesman, uh, had the courage to do big things, but also that there's a feeling of a deep absence. And I'm wondering what, what your reaction has been so far. Well, first of all, I got the news from my dear friend Mark Mulroney, Brian's son, a very successful businessman here in Toronto. He called me to let me know that his father had passed. And uh, I think it's an incredible loss for the country. Um, He's a father of four and a brilliant businessman. We all know him as the great statesman uh, with that great, beautiful, rich voice and, and the Irish smile. Um, and uh, for me personally, he was a mentor, someone I called for advice uh, and an inspiration for what the country is all about because, of course, he came from such humble beginnings. He was the son of an electrician in a small Quebec town uh, and he worked hard worked like hell to get himself educated, pay his way through law school and became a great success story and prove that anybody can do that in this land of opportunity we call Canada. I can imagine that um, the, the advice and the wisdom that you received from him was probably invaluable given that uh, you, know, you hold the same position that he had many years ago. And I'm wondering, what was that like when you hosted him for dinner with, with Mila and what kind of advice did, did he offer you? Uh, as, as leader of uh, the Conservatives? Well, he, he, first of all, he, he, he said that, uh, that he and I were alike and that we had wives that were better than we were and that they would be uh, the secret to our success, he, that, that Mila was the secret to his success and that Anna, my wife, would be the secret to mine. Um, the second thing he reminded me of is I always remember where you came from. I was, I was born to a 16-year-old mom and put me up for adoption to two school teachers. He came from a working class background. He said, I always remember those roots and work for the people who start from those same humble beginnings. And the reason I know he meant it is because my wife and I were getting an oil change in South Ottawa uh, and just a normal mechanic shop. And the guy took our payment at the end said, Brian Mulroney's a friend of mine. I said, really? Brian's a friend of yours? Why is that? And he said, well, my dad worked for him at the Iron Ore Company over 40 years ago. And when he died, my phone rang. And it was Brian Mulroney. His dad, this fellow's dad, was a miner. And Brian had worked with him, had been the CEO, but remembered this miner. And decades later, called his son at the time of his passing. Just incredible personal connection with everyday hard-working people like his own father had been. That's part of the charm that, that he had and, and you know I had the, the pleasure of meeting him once and that was something that struck me that this man had so much um, he had so much uh, charisma and charm he and he was funny and uh, you know when I think of him words trailblazer, visionary, statesman come to mind. What are some of the words that you, would you use to describe All of those them? words. Let's look at his legacy. He took office in a terrible time in Canada. Interest rates had risen up to like 20 percent. We had the worst inflation in our history. Um, people were losing their homes. I remember the economic misery I, we were going through as, as kids at that age. Uh, I was about five at the time. And what did he do? He unleashed free enterprise. He crushed inflation. He restored fiscal sanity. He signed the most important free trade agreement in our country's history, one of the greatest in, in the history of the world that's still largely in place today. And then, of course, he fought apartheid in South Africa. Uh, Nelson Mandela said that Brian Mulroney was one of the key leaders who applied the sanctions to bring down the apartheid regime and, and give freedom to the people in South Africa. And speaking of freedom, he was on the right side of the Cold War. He shifted Canada back to be on the side of freedom against communism. Uh, that is a pretty incredible legacy for, for 10 years as Prime Minister. And at a time when Canada might not have had the biggest influence, especially amongst the G7 nations, yeah. he managed to step up. And you, you, know, you talk about his position and steadfast position when it comes to fighting apartheid. That was a pivotal moment, uh, I'm sure you would agree, for, for Canada, being right. able to speak up when you've got Ronald Reagan in the room, you've got Margaret Thatcher. Um, uh, talk about what, how that changed Canada's position on, on a global stage. It, it was a big change. Uh, prior to that, uh, I don't think those sorts of leaders would have taken a Canadian Prime Minister, uh, or at least his predecessor, seriously. But uh, because of his stature, his charm, his intellectual firepower, 
uh, he could sit down and have an hour-long conversation with the President of the United States or the Prime Minister of Great Britain, and they would really listen to his view. He, we had a strong military and a strong economy, so we were a, a powerful voice. Uh, and he stood on the right side of history, uh, like I said, on the right side of the Cold War against the communists. Uh, and that got, won him the respect. So even when he had disagreed with our allies, particularly on apartheid, because he, he stood out from our allies and did the right thing on apartheid before they did, he had the weight and the gravitas to be taken seriously and to affect real change. And, and uh, part of that position, uh, he developed a lot of great friendships and, yes. and he said something very poignant at the when he delivered the eulogy for George H. Bush and, and when it comes to friendship and he said there are wooden ships there are sailing ships there are ships that sail the sea but the best ships are friendships and may they always be the man had a way with words he didn't sure he? did <laughs> I think that's his Irish background uh, you know you can imagine him sitting around the dinner table with his his uh, electrician father when he was a kid in Bay Como and probably in both languages being regaled of uh, all, all the great stories and then he, he took that storytelling magic uh, and probably that's why he connected with another great storyteller President Ronald Reagan uh, and had so many cherished memories and friendships with the greatest leaders of the world um, it's pretty rare pretty exceptional and something for us all to be pretty proud. You know, the phrase standing on the shoulders of giants is uh, it's a metaphor, uh, which means using the understanding gained by major thinkers who have gone before in order to make intellectual progress. Do you feel that that yes. weight when you when you carry this position and you have someone like Brian Mulroney who's who's held that position before? Do you, do you feel that that kind of weight and that that responsibility that comes with this position that you have? It does. I mean, it's surreal for me because I was a five-year-old kid when I first saw him. I was My dad plunked me in front of the TV screen and the leaders were debating in the 84 election. Uh, and I, I don't remember any of the details. I just remember that was the first time I realized what a prime minister was. And it was him. And, uh, and now, I, having had a chance to know his family, I'm really in awe of what he achieved. And it's a, a great uh, inspiration for what can be done. If you, if, you, if you stand for big things and, and uh, live up to the potential of the country. I want to circle back to talking about family because, you know, I know he mentioned to you that, uh, you know, your wife will be the key to personal, your personal and political success, but also as a father. I mean, at a time when, when you're the prime minister, obviously there's going to be positions and policy that's going to be divisive and not everyone's going to agree with you and not everyone's going to like you uh, and that could be tough uh, as a family man and I'm wondering a little bit more about what you learned about um, the responsibility of, of not only doing your job but also maintaining um, being a father and, and being a husband. Well what my friend Mark uh, Brian's son has told me about his father is that yes obviously his dad was busy he was, he was leading a G7 what became a, a G7 country, an incredible uh, nation, one of the biggest in the world in ge geographic size, which made it hard. But when he was with his kids, he wasn't just there physically, he was there intellectually, psychologically, in every way. And every single one of his four kids were made to feel like they were the most important person in the world when they were around their dad. And uh, that reminds us all that that's our most important job. I know that you're a father, uh, and that's your most important job, just like it's my most important job. And I think Brian Mulroney would have said, of all the things he did, that was his most important job. I was listening to an interview earlier on our show with um, Bob Fife, and he was talking about the fact that even at his age, and e even with all the health obstacles and challenges that he was facing, that he was still so in tune with what was happening in the world. Right. He knew everything, what was happening. In whether it was politics in Sweden or Taiwan, as you were mentioning, what do you think that says about just his, uh, his intellect and how in tune he was with, with what's happening in the world? He was razor sharp to the end. I spoke to him about six weeks ago. I gave him a call when he was on the road. He knew everything that was happening. He, he had followed, he, he was recounting to me things that had happened in the House of Commons. I don't know if he, keeps, he kept CPAC on in the background. <laughs> he was chairing meetings of major businesses major corporate corporations right up until about two months ago. 
Um, he was in New York to receive an award from the Jewish community for his courageous defense uh, of Jews and Israelis. Um, so he, he was on top of everything. You could have called him up and asked him about the most obscure foreign policy question in a little discussed country in, a, in, a, in an obscure part of the world that he would have been able to give you insight. That's the kind of brain power he had. Um, and we can only uh, pray to have the same. And the fact that this is a guy who uh, is the only prime minister that has been asked to eulogize former U.S. presidents. I yes. mean, this is a big, that's, that's a big deal. I'm yes. sure you would agree. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, the, pre the White House is, uh, and, and was then, uh, the center of the global political power system, particularly during the Cold War. Everybody wanted to be able to get the White House on the phone. Uh, all the leaders, and Brian Mulroney could because he had such a stature, and he built personal friendships with Bush and Reagan, who were his counterparts, and I think he spoke at both of their funerals. Yes. Um, that's a pretty exceptional testament to who he was and how they viewed him, not just as a prime minister, but as a man. Pierre Paliava, we appreciate you coming into the studio. Thank you so much. An honor to be with you. Appreciate your time. Thank you.